morning. This is Pastor Tim at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. It's uh, the second Sunday in Advent. Um, I'm glad you're all here. Welcome, and uh, it's a gorgeous day out here to uh, be worshiping God and, and giving thanks for the week that is to come and what He has done for us. Uh, we pray for all those that are in need, and um, I'm, I'm glad that we're together virtually. This is kind of weird because there is absolutely nobody behind you. It's just me and, and God, and sure hope God gives me the words and supports me. So, having said all that, if you uh, have an LBW, uh, we will uh, start with the uh, confession and uh, forgiveness of sin found on page 77. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved everybody else. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the new, the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel. God fulfills the promise. Light two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. Gently lead them
If you have your Bibles uh, and want to follow along with the readings, our first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, and we will read verses 1 through 11. Isaiah chapter 40, 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries, and, what sh and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. <clears throat> Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our gods will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, says the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Our psalm today comes from, uh, is Psalm 85. Psalm 85, and we read the whole psalm. So here we go, Psalm 85. Lord, you were favorable to your hand, land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your heart anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Why do you hide your face from me, wretched and closed to death from my youth up? I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. Your wrath has swept over me. You, you dread, your dread assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. From all sides they close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbor to shun me. My companions are in darkness. The epistle comes from 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, and we read verses 8 through 14. 8 through 14. 2 Peter chapter 3. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But 
in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. And the reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, beginning at, at chapter 1, beginning with uh, the first verse. We read 1 through 8. In the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one carrying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, my dear beloved family of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and visiting friends. Well, if you're visiting for the first time here on this, on this video, we welcome you and thank, uh, ask you to come back. And friends of the family of Good Shepherd, boy do I miss you. This is really tough doing this without anybody sitting in front of me. But, by the grace of God, there we go. In the scripture today, the Gospel of Mark, uh, there's three things I want to talk about, uh, about the Gospel and scripture reading. So, the first one, <coughs> excuse me, is the, uh, uh, the way Mark writes. Mark is written uh, in, in, in brevity. He's very quick to move from one place to another. Okay, the re and, and you can just tell by uh, uh, the compared to the chapters of, of the other Gospels. Matthew has 28 chapters, Luke has 24, John has 21, and Mark brings up the last one at 16 chapters. <clears throat> so obviously, if you take the chapters of Matthew, which has 28, and, and John, Mark has 16. Obviously, not everything in Matthew is going to be in Mark, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> for example, um, Mark starts out by saying, John the Baptist is coming here to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, what happened to the uh, Jesus' birth? What about all of that that goes on in Matthew and then in Luke? Uh, <clears throat> for some reason, uh, Mark decided that that was a, he didn't want to start there. He wanted to uh, start with the good news of Jesus Christ. In other words, the ministry of Jesus Christ and his baptism and going forward. Okay, but there's another part that says that uh, uh, we all know that in Matthew and Luke, uh, or that they, they talk about Jesus going into the wilderness for forty days and being tempted by Satan and three, three great temptations and all that. And then he was, uh, after 40 days, he was famished and the angels came and served him. I want to read to you what Mark uh, uh, writes about that, uh, that event. And it's in chapter one, verse 12. And the spirit immediately drove him, Jesus, out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. And that's it. So, I guess Mark says, yeah, that's something I'll recognize, but then I'll move forward. 
And it's like, wow. But this is Mark. He really moves fast, moves forward. Okay? So you have to understand that about Mark. Now, let's talk about uh, John. Uh, this is the start of uh, John the Baptist. And he says, in the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He just states it right there. This is all about Jesus Christ, the good news, the Son of God. So if Mark were to say, that's all I'm going to write about, then okay, what more do you want to need about that? This is also like the, uh, the book of Revelation. And people have really a misguided sense of what the book of Revelation is. It's all about uh, destroying death and, and, and that. But a actually, if you read verse 1, it says it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the message of the book of Revelation. But Jesus Christ doesn't come until everything is so bad. Then Jesus Christ reveals himself to everything that he is the savior of all and will make everything new again. So uh, this is what uh, John Mark really writes this right away. Okay. So that's one part. Now. Mark is looking at John and saying, well, who is this John? He doesn't even reference John to being a cousin to Jesus. That's not even there. Okay, but he says, as it is written by the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Okay, so John is saying, I am here to fulfill prophecy. I am a prophet, and I am saying, I am coming to make the way straight so that you are, we can bring Jesus Christ to us. And he is fulfilling himself through Isaiah, which was written some 500 years ago. And here's John saying, I am the prophet, and I am fulfilling all of that. So, the other part is, this, this part that has always confused me, is that when John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism, and then he was saying that he was a, a, a prophet uh, clothed with camels here, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. Now, I've always wondered, why did that line get in there? Well, if John is a prophet, and he is, Prophets in those days were not uh, living in luxury. <clears throat> they were not living in palaces, in uh, great places, having great parties, eating good stuff, uh, wearing silk with colorful uh, clothing. Uh, that was not what a prophet was. <clears throat> a prophet was someone who really lived the life of Jesus Christ, of humbleness, of humility, of helping other people. And by doing that, he proclaimed and said that uh, John is wearing uh, uh, clothing with fur, uh, with a belt, and uh, eating locusts and wild honey, which is one that is in the wilderness, goes around in the wilderness. So uh, when, when they say uh, a voice crying out in the wilderness, John is saying, that's me, and I live that life, okay? I live that life. So that, that clears up that for me. But the, uh, the most important thing I think that is in this scripture today is the baptism, which is one of my favorite things to talk about and live. And so John is proclaiming that he is offering a baptism of repentance and forgiveness. Now, first of all, we have to understand that uh, this washing of one, cleansing of one, has, is a uh, uh, ritual that people are well aware of it. You do that when you have to go to a very, uh, a function that is very honorable, has a royal uh, overtones to it, and people will bathe themselves, they'll put on their, their Sunday best, if you will, and cleanse themselves, anoint themselves with oil, and so then they're ready for the big event. Well, John is taking this event and giving it a new name and giving it a new meaning. Just like when Jesus was there on Monday, Thursday, and he 
and the uh, Monday, Thursday, and all of that was for the Passover, the celebration of Passover. <clears throat> so what they did, what Jesus did, was take that Passover and give it new meaning, uh, the bread, his body, and the wine, his blood, and his pro uh, telling them, the disciples, that he is going to die on the cross. Okay, so John is proclaiming a baptism of uh, repentance and forgiveness. He's changing the meaning of a, a tradition and a ritual that they do. But let's take these two things, uh, repentance and forgiveness. I think we all know what repentance means. Repentance means that says, okay, uh, I'm, uh, I, 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 re, I acknowledge what I did as a sin. And that's good. And you're saying you're sorry. That's good. Uh, but I have an issue with what's, what's coming out today in our culture. And I don't like the, what's happening here. Uh, this, this term that people are starting to use right now is the term, my bad. My bad. My bad. Okay. I look at that term. And I'm going, is that a form of repentance? And when um, I look at it, break it down, I'm saying that that term, my bad, the only thing it's doing is acknowledging that I did something bad. I, I'm, uh, I'm bad, that's my bad, you know, yeah, I did that. And there's nothing else. In repentance, we do acknowledge our sin to say that, but then we also say we're sorry. Okay, we are sorry. When I say I'm bad, I don't hear any I'm sorry. I just hear, yeah, I did that, but I'm not sorry. Or I am sorry, but I'm not sorry. I, I don't know, but I just don't like that term. So the other part of repentance is that uh, not only is it to acknowledge my that I did sin and say I'm sorry, but then the other part is that I proclaim that I will never do that again. I turn away from the bad thing I did. I turn away from the evil. I turn away from my sin so I no longer sin. Okay, if I say I'm bad, I don't hear that at all. So in repentance, when we're talking repentance, we're talking about acknowledging our sin, saying I'm sorry, and the most important thing, which most of us probably don't know, but if we do know, it's hard to, to live that out, is to say, I will never do that again. Okay, so John is giving a uh, baptism of forgiveness, uh, repentance and forgiveness of sin. And people from all Judea uh, are coming out and, uh, and Judah and trying to uh, confess their sins. And they're being baptized. But at the end, Jesus, or John says, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. So that says that someone more powerful, someone more important, someone that is truly up there is coming after me. He never said that he's a cousin. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. All right, so now John is saying, yes, I give you a baptism of repentance and forgiveness, but the one who is more powerful, the one I'm not even worthy to untie the his sandal. And even the slave, the lowest of slaves, is worthy to stoop down in the dirt, in the mud, and untie the master's shoe so that he can wash his feet and be cleansed, the master can be cleansed. Even John says, I can't do that. I'm not worthy of that. Well, wow, if he's not worthy, who is? But he says, he who is coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Well, what's the difference between the baptism that John offers of repentance and forgiveness and the one who Jesus, he's, Je John is talking about Jesus, of the baptism that Jesus is giving? If you look at John's baptism of forgiveness and uh, repentance, 
something's missing. Something there is missing. And in other words, Jesus Christ is fulfilling that missing part. And that missing part is, as Luther would say, we have, we have two sacraments, and there is three criteria for each of the sacraments, okay? To make it a sacrament. Number one, Jesus instituted it. And we know that when, right after this happens, Jesus is baptized, and he institutes baptism. Number two, it contains an earthly element. Well, in baptism, we have water, and in <clears throat> communion, we have the bread and wine, all very symbolic of some powerful, powerful stuff. And number three, which is what is missing out of John's baptism, but what is brought by Jesus' baptism is salvation. That's what's missing in John's baptism. If you see it, it is repentance and forgiveness. But Jesus says, I am going to take that one step further, that in my baptism, with the Holy Spirit coming down upon me, it is the forgiveness, repentance and forgiveness of sin and your salvation, eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. That is powerful stuff. That distinguishes what John starts, but yet Jesus takes it to the ultimate level with the Holy Spirit. And by being baptized, you are given the Holy Spirit, which ensures you of your salvation, eternal life. And that's powerful. I could go on and on and, and talk about that. But in this, it is the good news of Jesus Christ, which John is in, in introducing. And basically, it's the, uh, the baptism, the baptism of John, of repentance and forgiveness, and then eventually the baptism of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, with holy water, and then eternal salvation. On this second Sunday of Advent, that is just good news as we prepare for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that when... We do have a baptism, and you should remember your baptism every day. You should remember your the good news of Jesus Christ every day. And by doing so, you're saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. But by your grace, love, mercy, and forgiveness, I am a child of God in you, in my baptism. And that is solely given to you as a gift through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He descended into hell. On, on the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the Lord on behalf of the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, we long for your salvation. Make haste and help us. Come quickly with blessing and comfort for your people, O strong deliverer of Israel and the redeemer of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prepare your church for the coming of your Son from valleys of lukewarm worship and half-hearted service. Raise it to heights of praise and compassion. Level mountains of false teaching and self-importance. Lead it along level pathways of faithfulness and humility, so that many may journey to your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prepare the people of this congregation for the coming of our Savior. Help us to exalt the humble, to bring low the mountains of self-will in our lives, and to make level pathways for leading others to Jesus. Look with favor upon those learning the way of discipleship and upon your missionaries around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prepare the hearts of our children for the coming of their dear Savior. Protect and bless them and help us teach them to love Jesus and to trust him always. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Prepare the world for the coming of its king. Give our leaders the will to raise people from depths of poverty. Level the mountains of injustice throughout the world. Let nation no longer raise sword against nation. And guide all people in pathways of righteousness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prepare the hearts of those who suffer for the coming of Christ, the great physician. We lift up to you before, before you the needs of those that we name aloud or silently within our hearts. Raise them up from sickness and sorrow. Lay low the mountains of pain and by your son's gentle hand. Lead them and their loved ones along level paths into health and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and also with you. At this time, we normally wave and greet each other, so if you want to do that to me and I do it back to you, uh, we also uh, receive the offering at this time. Um, I, I pray that you continue to uh, give to the church, Good Shepherd, even though we are not meeting together. Um, you are doing a great job, and I, I pray that we continue that uh, practice. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us today, and have a blessed week coming up.